Um, I want to thank all the witnesses today. It's, it's been very, very informative. And, and obviously, with all the recent discussion on infrastructure, this is, this is a very important time for us to be uh, very thoughtful about the federal government's role in infrastructure, how to improve the project development delivery process, uh, how to properly prioritize projects. And of course, there's always this discussion on balance of utilization of green versus gray, um, how to use the, 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 the best tool in the toolbox most effectively to, to achieve the best outcome. What, one of the, the questions that I've, I've asked myself a lot over the past few weeks is, is, is what I stated. What is the federal government's role in infrastructure? And certainly in this committee, you can make an excellent case for the federal government has a role in interstates. It has a role in the national highway system. It has a role in dealing with waterways that traverse various states and serve as major navigation channels for international commerce. Um, when you get beyond there, the question starts getting a little bit more challenging. Um, one of the things about the federal government's role in highways or interstates, for example, is that there's a user fee mechanism. You, you go and you pay a tax for every gallon of gas you buy. The more gas you burn uh, because you have an inefficient vehicle, you drive more miles, uh, the, more, the more of a user fee you pay. In the case of water systems, there's a similar user fee mechanism. Uh, but that is collected entirely at the local level. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm just curious, and please uh, don't, this isn't a, an attack on you, but, uh, but I am just curious at your response, uh, both the DC and uh, the LA systems. Uh, give me your pitch as to why this is a, a federal responsibility uh, for us to jump in and, and pay this whenever you have a user fee mechanism uh, in place. Uh, maybe, maybe Ms. Powell, I'll start with you. Yes, thank, and thank you for the question. Um, I, we believe that um, one way for the federal government to partner with, uh, with, with localities and, and local utilities is to increase the amount of funding for, for water infrastructure, um, because it is infrastructure. It supports the built environment and it supports essential services in every community. Uh, and I think that someone said that no community can be without it. Um, obviously, we're here in D.C., and it can be seen as, as a national security issue if you don't have safe, clean drinking water and wastewater services because of the customers that we provide services to. Um, and I think that, um, you know, again, the, the federal government providing the levels of funding that is consistent with other, mode, other, other infrastructure sectors um, is, is a start. Um, for us in D.C., we believe that there uh, should be a, a, a federal fair share contributed to uh, the infrastructure that was uh, turned over to the district to manage, uh, which was uh, undersized when it was turned over to, to the district. And that is something that we will be uh, looking into more. Uh, and then the last way I would say is to implement the, uh, in a sustainable way, a low-income water assistance program, uh, as Ms. Hammer said, it's important for everyone to have access to safe, clean drinking water. Uh, and there are many that cannot afford it. There are some states that don't have enabling legislation for customer assistance programs. And we have a number of projects that we have to implement um, to uh, be in compliance with federal regulation. So it's important to, to make sure that we have funding to implement those projects without overburdening. Th thank you. I, I want to make sure we have time for Mr. Uh, Fronte to answer as well. I, I just I want to make note, I, I believe that Washington has one of the lowest rates in the, in the nation in, in regard to water rates. And, and I, I'm just not sure I understand this divorce between user fees and and federal government investment. Um, Mr. Fronte, I just have a, about 30 seconds left, but do you care to answer? Sure. And perhaps uh, more specifically, don't... why should people in Louisiana and Arkansas pay for LA's water system? Sure, uh, the, the issues we're facing uh, with respect to drought uh, covers more than just California, it covers you know, uh, the Southwestern United States. So it's an, really an interstate issue. And obviously with greenhouse gas emissions, the reductions that can occur in California 
benefit not only to the people uh, on the East Coast and Louisiana, but across the world. So it is really uh, a, a big, it's a global issue. It's a national issue at a minimum. So the reductions that we can achieve here and the, the reductions that they can achieve benefit us as well. And that's why uh, I think we could use use your fees, but we, we want to use these money in an equal way, in a uniform way across the country, attacking the global issues or interstate issues, especially with respect to water and climate change. Thank, thank you both for your, for your answers. Madam Chair, uh, I want to thank you. I just think we need to be very thoughtful as we move forward at, at, at losing this alignment between ratepayers and infrastructure, because I think that you have incentives aligned. When you start divorcing it, there's no longer an incentive for people to be efficient with water usage and things like that. So I think as we move forward, uh, think about that. Thank you. Yield back.